Hi guys, today we're talking about quantum physics and in this problem it says a star with a radius of 8.47 times 10 to the 8th meters has a peak wavelength of 676 nanometers in the spectrum of its emitted radiation. So for part A it says find the energy of a photon with this wavelength in joules per photon. So I've written down some equations here that might be helpful and uh, we're going to start with this one, energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. All right, so we've got E equals H, which is just going to be this Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And we're going to multiply that uh, by the frequency. So how do we find the frequency? We know that C equals frequency times wavelength. So frequency must equal C divided by our wavelength. Okay, and so just to, so we don't get this too confusing, I'm going to uh, put this. So H, as we know, is in joules per second. So joules per second. Okay. And then we've got, uh, we've got C divided by our wavelength, okay? And then I'm going to put in our units here. All right, so in C, as we know, is in uh, meters per second, and our wavelength is just going to be in meters. So when we do that, what happens uh, is uh, the seconds cancel out, these meters cancel out, and all you're left with is joules per photon. So Go over to the calculator, and I've already worked it out. So we've got this H right here, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, and we multiply that by its frequency. And remember, to get the frequency, we take the speed of light, which is 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then we're going to divide that by our wavelength, uh, which is 776 nanometers, or, 7, 6, or 676 times 10 to the negative 9th. Uh, meters and we come up with 2.94 uh, times 10 to the negative 19th. Okay, so for our answer, uh, we get 2.94 times 10 uh, to the is that negative 19 and that is going to be in joules per photon all right now uh, for part two it says what is the surface temperature of the star in Kelvin okay so for that one we're going to be using what's called Wien's displacement law and this is it. It's real simple. Um, you just have your wavelength max times the temperature, and it's going to equal 0.2898 times 10 to the negative second. Um, so all we have to do is set T equal to this number divided by our wavelength. So we got T is going to equal uh, this number, so 0.2898. Times 10 to the negative second meters or meter times Kelvin, and we're going to divide that by our wavelength. And as we know, our wavelength is going to be in meters, so that cancels out, and you're going to be left with Kelvin. And so, when you do that, uh, we got 0.2898 times 10 to the negative second uh, divided by our wavelength, which is 676 times 10 to the negative ninth, and it's going to leave us with 4.287 uh, yeah, 4 uh, times 10 to the third, or roughly 4300 Kelvin. Okay. So this is going to equal 4.2, let's make sure here, 4.287, yeah, 87 times 10 to the third K 
Kelvin. Okay. Now for part C, it says, at what rate is energy emitted from the star in the form of radiation? Okay, so for that, um, the answer is going to be in watts. And how you know watt is uh, a rate of energy is if you look at this, I mean, it's kilograms times meters squared divided by seconds cubed. Um, so it is a rate, okay? Um, and what we're going to be using is this power formula. And this is power in watts is equal uh, to sigma, uh, which is just the stefan boltzmann constant, constant 5.6704 times 10 to the negative 8 uh, watts divided by meter squared times uh, k, k to the fourth. And then so we've got our Stefan Boltzmann constant, and that's also called sigma, times the area of our star, which is the area of a sphere is 4 times pi times r squared. And then E is going to be our emissivity. And for this problem, I know it doesn't say it, but we are assuming that this is a black body, uh, which is 1. And that just means um, that it absorbs the light. So we're going to use 1 for E, and then we are going to input this temperature for here, okay? And so uh, when you do that, so here we got, uh, for part C, we've got our power is equal to sigma times A times, hang on a second, E times t to the fourth power, okay, and um, just so you know that this is going to be in left in watts, let me show you this. So we've got our sigma, and that is going to be in, uh, what is that, uh, watts per meter squared times k to the fourth, okay? And then we've got our area, okay? And uh, let's see, we don't have to worry about E, okay? And then we have T here. All right, so then we've got our area, and that, of course, is going to be in meters squared, all right? And then uh, T, now remember this is t to the fourth power, okay, because of uh, this right here, okay. So um, so that's also going to be left with Calvin to the fourth power. And so when you do that, you can cancel the k fourths out, and or k to the fourth, and then the meter squared out, and you're going to be left with. When we do that, we get... Uh, Let's see here. All right, so we've got our Stefan Boltzmann constant, or sigma, 5.6704 times 10 to the negative eighth. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that by the area of a sphere. And for that, we took 4 times pi times the radius of our star, so 8.47 times 10 to the eighth. And that's squared. Okay, so this is going to be your area. And then we just simply multiply, multiply that by the temperature, okay, uh, to the fourth power, and it leaves us with 1.73 uh, times 10 to the 26. All right, so we are going to be left with 1.73 times 10 to the 26 in watts. All right. <clears throat> so, let's see, for part D, estimate the rate at which photons leave the surface of the star in photons per second. So, this is simply just conversion. So, we already know what it is in joules per photon, and um, so we know that there are this amount of joules in a single photon. So, if we inverse that, uh, we would know how many photons uh, would be in one joule, right? Okay. So, to
to convert, and then of course we have the total power of our star. This is the rate at which the star is uh, emitting radiation. So what we need to do is figure out a way to convert this from watts to joules. So as you know, we've got watts equals kilograms times meters squared divided by seconds cubed, and joule looks like it's almost the same thing, with the only exception being instead of seconds cubed, it's seconds squared. So for you to uh, say you start off with watts, all you're going to do is divide it by an S, and then it now becomes watts. Okay? So you can say that W is equal to J divided by S. So for this watts, you're just going to replace this watts with joules divided by S or seconds. So let's do this. We've got, uh, let's see here. So we've got one divided by 2.94 times 10 to the negative 19th, uh, okay, sorry, hang on, uh, I did that backwards, oops, okay, so 1, and then since we flip this, uh, we're also going to flip it, so this is going to be left in photons, okay, and this is going to be in joules. Okay. And then we take our work formula right here, which we say, uh, or this not work, but uh, power 1.73 times 10 to the 26 watts. But instead of watts, we're replacing it with joules divided by seconds. Okay, so we're going to say uh, same thing, joule divided by seconds. Okay, so then what we're going to be left, so these joules are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with photons per second. So when you take this calculator, you get this uh, 1 divided by 2.94 times 10 to the negative 19 times 1.73 times 10 to the 26th, and you get 5.884 uh, times 10 to the 44th power. Alright, so, so you're going to be left with 5.884 times 10 to the 44th photons per second. And uh, that's how you solve that problem.